Welcome to Read This Book. I'm Tim Johnson, Curator of Special Collections and Rare Books and the E.W. McDermott Curator of the Sherlock Holmes Collections at the University of Minnesota Libraries. I've got four books uh, to talk about today, um, books that for me kind of form an arch of, uh, or an arc uh, of my summer reading, kind of taking us from uh, the late spring, early summer commencement season at the universities around the country uh, up into the fall. Um, and so I'll kind of walk you through uh, and uh, share um, these four books with you, uh, things that I've enjoyed over the summer um, that I would encourage everyone, if they have a chance, uh, to read. The first one is uh, Neil Gaiman's, uh, it's actually a, a commencement speech <clears throat> that he gave at uh, the University of the Arts in uh, 2012. What's uh, also interesting about this particular book is you can see and hear Neil uh, give his talk. Um, it's on YouTube, so you can have a chance to follow along in the book as you're uh, watching and listening to Neil give this commencement address, which is Make Good Art. Um, labeled by, by many who've commented on it, uh, both the book and the video, uh, as an inspirational piece. Um, uh, I've been reading a lot of Neil Gaiman over the last year, and this was kind of the, one of the last pieces that I uh, came across. Um, and it is, it is one of those uh, moments uh, and volumes that uh, cause you to think, uh, like any uh, commencement address, uh, Neil's giving advice. He's giving advice uh, to new graduates. Um, and, uh, but there are wonderful little pearls, uh, wisdom uh, based on his own experience as a writer, uh, working in comics, uh, graphic novels, uh, writing uh, and doing audio books. Um, interestingly, Neil himself uh, never went to college, never went to university. And he comments about that at the beginning of the book um, and how he simply went out and did what he wanted to do, which was to write. Um, I won't spoil all of the, all of the pieces of advice uh, that he gives, although there's one um, that he mentions towards the tail end of the book um, that I, I found particularly uh, useful. Um, particularly poignant, um, which was um, and a piece of advice he received from Stephen King um, to really stop and enjoy what you're doing along the way. And his confession that over the, the many years he was writing, working on The Sandman, which is when Stephen gave him this bit of advice, that uh, he wasn't having fun. He wasn't enjoying the moment. Uh, he was always worrying about the next thing uh, and, and couldn't stop and pause and look around and take in uh, what was happening to him at that time, at that moment. Again, Neil Gaiman's Make Good Art, um, which is the advice that he leaves with the graduates uh, at the end. The next book um, was one that I actually read um, that my dad had picked up uh, we were going on a fishing trip to northern Minnesota and of course you always want to have some other stuff to do because you're not going to be out in the boat fishing all the time uh, and some days the weather might not cooperate. Uh, and he had stopped off at his local bookstore and picked up a copy of Harper Lee's, Harper Lee's Ghost Set a Watchman. And had it in his bag and when he brought it up to the lake I thought I've got to spend some time with this book. Now, I intentionally had not read any of the reviews and simply took the book on its own terms. Um, and for me, it was interesting, an interesting reflection um, given when the story's set and where the story's set. Makeham, Alabama, in the mid-1950s, uh, Jean Louise Finch, a.k.a. Scout, uh, is now 26. Atticus is in his early 70s, suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and a lot of the story uh, revolves around um, some, some things that are, I think, always important to think about. Family, place, tradition. Um, 
And in the end, it's, it's scouts maybe coming of age. But I found myself reflecting on um, what it was like to grow up in the South, in my case in Florida, uh, in the early 1960s uh, when civil rights was still uh, front and center. The, the book invited that kind of reflection about race, about civil rights, uh, about states' rights, about the Constitution, uh, about where we find ourselves now in our, with our own discussions um, today about race and racism and the importance of, of all lives mattering. Um, that's what kind of, kind of drove me uh, along as I was paging through Go Set a Watchman. In the end, where I landed, and uh, some may land there, some may land other places, was Atticus's high regard for the law um, and letting the law uh, do its work. I found myself enthralled with another book, uh, Daniel James Brown's uh, The Boys in the Boat, um, which is a story about um, some young college men at the University of Washington uh, and their quest uh, uh, to become the premier rowers that they indeed uh, became, uh, winning the gold in the Olympics in 1936 in Hitler's Berlin. And there are a number of, of things that were fun for me in this book, uh, not having been a member of, of a crew, um, to understand or get an appreciation for how demanding that sport is. And it comes at an interesting time. The early 30s, the country is in the depths of the Depression. Um, Hoovervilles are popping up all over the country. Um, and Seattle is no different from anywhere else. Um, agricultural prices uh, are depressed. Um, no one's able to really make a go of it. Um, uh, the way they had been accustomed to. Uh, into this story in the early 1930s comes this young man, Joe Rance, um, who himself has a, a challenging childhood, uh, a father who has difficulty uh, holding a job, uh, who loses his mother uh, and then um, tries to get to know his stepmother, uh, but there's a distance there. Um, Rance's uh, story um, is intertwined with the other nine stories that make up the crew of this amazing uh, boat. Um, all kind of rough hewn, um, coming from working on farms, working in the woods, cutting timber, uh, on fishing boats. They're much different in character than uh, the crews that you would find at Cornell or Harvard or Princeton or Yale or Oxford and Cambridge for that matter. Um, and this is another interesting little vignette uh, segment of the book. It gives you this interesting um, depiction of, of the east-west divide in the country. Um, the west still seen in some ways as rough and tumble and backward, the east as moneyed and elite um, and privileged. Um, and so into this mix you have uh, a very stoic coach at Washington uh, who doesn't, who plays his cards pretty close to the vest. Um, these nine young men who um, are wrestling with um, the whole idea of being on a crew, having never done it before, um, who in their first uh, nine months of arduous practice on Lake Washington through all kinds of nasty weather, um, in the end uh, become the, the freshman boat of the year in the collegiate rowing competitions that happen out east. All of this is also interwoven in with what's happening in Germany at the same time. The rise of Hitler, um, the designs uh, to, to behind the Olympics to create uh, this kind of Nazi showcase. It's in some ways very chilling um, to have that juxtaposition to what's happening out in Seattle. Uh, with these nine young men. This book, The Boys in the Boat, uh, by Daniel James Brown, has given me uh, more insight into what uh, those young athletes are going through and uh, a desire to kind of follow along with what our own crew is up to at the university.
And then finally, uh, I've got to slip in a Sherlock Holmes piece here. It's Art in the Blood by Bonnie McBird. Um, and it's a Sherlock Holmes adventure that does indeed involve art. Um, it's McBird's uh, debut novel. Um, she's been quite active uh, in Hollywood uh, in terms of some projects, movies, screenplays, and so forth out there. But this was her first attempt uh, to dive into a Sherlock Holmes uh, story. And she plays with that theme, art in the blood, uh, and Holmes' own um, genealogy of having a French painter uh, related to him uh, through blood, uh, his own interest in art. And uh, I won't spoil the mystery for you, um, but would in invite you to, to read Art in the Blood when it comes out in September. Bonnie is currently over in London. Uh, she's had fun uh, at the BBC Proms, which did a special Sherlock program one night. But then she'll be here, and you'll have a chance uh, to meet her. She's going to be our speaker, uh, guest speaker, at the annual meeting of the Friends of the Sherlock Holmes Collection. And that event, I believe, takes place on October 21st or 22nd. Uh, check the library's events pages for the exact uh, information, but uh, hope you can come out that evening uh, to hear Bonnie uh, talk about her debut novel and what it's like uh, to write a Sherlockian adventure uh, in the style of Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, so those are my four books. I hope you have a chance to pick those up. Uh, they're all good reads. Uh, some of them go quickly. Some of them cause you to want to pause and ponder and think about life and what it means in the 21st century. So thanks for uh, joining me on this installment of Read This Book.